Allegheny and Erie County Council will come to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carol, you have an optional prayer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let us pray. This is not the time to gaze about. There is work to be done. Let us get to work on the task ahead. Put our attention on the vision of a better community. We need to get into the pathways of being ready and willing to serve. God, help us to focus on our courage and strength and to measure up to what is expected of us. We ask this in our name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Next roll call, please. Mr. Anderson? Carl? Here. Mrs. Fatico? Here. Dr. Faust? Here. Mr. Horton? Here. Mrs. Lal? Here. Mr. Rastatter? Here. Chairman Leon? Here. Before we go to the hearing of the public, uh, Kathy, you wanted to make a statement? Yes, yes. Um, I just, I'm thrilled to be able to host here at the Cambridge Environmental Center a place where um, even growing up on the Lower East Side and then into Lawrence Park, I took bus routes here from Lawrence Park to the ferry, ended up spending my summers um, here on the peninsula at Waterworks. And now that the EMTA has improved and increased its services, I think more um, people are going to be able to have and kids are going to be able to have the opportunities um, that I had growing up and being able to to enjoy this beautiful park. I want to especially thank um, Matt Green and Barb Chafee, who I met or uh, ran into at a COG event and we started talking and I said, how can I make sure that this room gets booked? And they said, we have to do it as soon as possible. So I just want to thank them and I want to thank all of you for, for coming here. And if it's the first time for many of you, please come back again. Thank you so much. Thank you. On the hearing of the public, if anyone is called in, they would get uh, five minutes uh, to speak. All others will have three minutes to speak. It would be plenty of time. The, the only person that did call in is uh, Randy Barnes. Randy. Thank you, Chairman, uh, Council, uh, guests. Uh, my name is Randy Barnes. Uh, I reside in the Dr. Faust uh, district. And uh, for most of us here, we can remember when uh, there weren't computers in schools. Uh, it seems like it had been uh, maybe 20, 25 years that it was a big deal that teachers needed to have computers. And we had corporations falling all over themselves to try to sponsor computer labs. And then we had computer labs. And we had computers in the classroom. My how time flies. Uh, today, uh, as we see another class graduates from high school, getting ready to go to college, the one thing all of them have in common is they're going to carry a computer with them to college. And the reason why they take a carry a computer is because so many of their classes are done online. They may never even personally meet an instructor face to face, but complete a course and submit all the requirements to pass that course via the computer. You know, I, uh, the problem with, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the regional college and the uh, college that has been given to us. Uh, we talk often about how we've been supporting community colleges all over the state and we don't have one. Think about this, please. The Northwest Pennsylvania Regional College is being funded by the entire state. We, as Erie County, as residents, put no money into it. Everybody in the state is helping fund that college. People in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Scranton and Wilkes, every place outside, every place in the state is helping fund this college. I've been a proponent of this college since the inception. I spoke at it well over a year and a half ago at the state uh, hearing at the P Blasco Library. I say, give the college a chance. I've repeated it several times. Make them say no. Make them say no. It's your college. You people are going to decide Council needs to support this college. This is like the, the best kept secret in Northwest Pennsylvania. Only a hundred and some students know about it, but they're going to college and they're getting education. One thing uh, businesses look for, every job just about 
requires some computer skills. Isn't that a coincidence that every job requires computer skills? And we're talking about learning via the computer. If you can't learn via the computer, you're not going to be much value to any employer. Government is horribly inefficient landlords. And the reason why I say that is government owns all these buildings that get used about 40% of the time. You know, your own home, you probably, you may have a pet, you're using that building all the time, maybe you're there sleeping or maybe you have your family's there. But government is terribly inefficient. Just like this building, once we leave, there's nothing gonna go on here for the next eight or 10 hours. So, uh, so I think this is just so far advanced that we are using existing buildings and existing structures to try to keep the costs low. The material can be the same, whether you're in the Sahara Desert in front of a computer, or you're in this classroom, or you're in the Tom Ridge Center, or you're in a, a room with 50 other people. The content doesn't need to change. You people, counsel, you people as citizens, you people that know what you want, you need to, Friday at 10 o'clock, there's a board meeting of the regional college. If you think you know what you want, or you have a strong case, Local manufacturers have already been working with the regional college, designing things that they need. The jobs that we train for today aren't the jobs that are going to be there in 20 years. Many of you in the audience remember key punch operators. Hey, we go to school. We send hundreds and thousands of girls to school to be key punch operators. There are no key punch operators. <laughs> Okay, we're showing our age when we, when we smile about key punch, because I, I knew many people retired as key punch operators. Jobs change. It's up to us to, you know, the state, I think they can twist and turn and change faster, this regional college, if you people demand, you tell them what you want. I've, I've seen it, that we don't have welding, or we don't have plumbing. Well, those might be trade school things. I think we need colleges and I think we need to take our high school students, and when they graduate from high school, they need to be able to read at a 12th grade level. They need to multiply, divide, and subtract. Read with comprehension. If you give me a student that graduates from high school that can read with comprehension, they can become a brain surgeon. Might take them a little bit longer than some other students, but if you can read, you'll know the difference between right and wrong if you can read. So give me some students that graduated high school that can read at a 12th grade level, and I think this, we, we've harnessed a whole group of counties up here. We're so strong up in this uh, corner of the state with all these counties being into this college. The premier aerospace manufacturers, 30 miles, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else, please give your name and location here in the area. Got my name is Freda Tepfer. I live in Erie. <clears throat> I would first like to say that in this diverse community, one thing that would make me more comfortable when attending these meetings, and unfortunately I have had to say it before, I understand that we, we, we pledge to a, a supreme being, but I don't like being prayed over in the name of somebody's savior. I just, it's not appropriate. I wish it wouldn't happen here. It makes me feel very uh, disconsidered. I'm here because of the community college. I'm here because I succeeded in life because I went to an actual community college which had face-to-face -face academic courses. And um, several of us met with the county executive today. The model that this um, Northwest Regional College she's talking about is not going to provide face-to-face -face academic courses. There may be face-to-face -face technical courses, welding and phlebotomy, but um, we're still asking people who are trying to get prepared to succeed in school, uh, their four -year transfer to a four-year institution to take video classes, video classes. We need to have in Erie, a community college that our local resources, our money from the Erie Community Foundation, our money from the uh, gaming is controlled here in Erie, not 
not that we have maybe control, but the, the ultimate control over the school is by some board that we only have two members of, but we have a committee that runs the local school. No, we need a real community college. So just like I was able to do, where I could take courses for a year and a half and I could transfer and succeed in life at, at a four-year school. Uh, and then go back later on and get career enrichment and help me with some soft skills I needed and, and, and uh, a nurse assistant certification and, and other courses my union paid for. We need that here in Erie. We need something locally controlled and we need to be able to decide what things that we want in person. Thank you. <coughs> Hello, Art Leopold. I'm in Mill Creek. And I'll do reference to Mr. Barnes and his enthusiasm. I was part of an organization that put about uh, 18,000 computers in local schools. I was involved in technology for over 30 years. And I've got to tell you, I love technology. It can do wonders. But it's a tool. It's a tool that can be used in the proper place and the proper time. And that's not, not a tool that is going to serve the population that we see, the majority of the population that we see in our urban environment. There's too many marginalized uh, students and young adults who are trying to find their way who need to have help as they move through a college experience. A two-year program or a community college is the ideal way to do it. And what I'm imploring you to think about and to take your time to do this. Don't be rushed by those who want to get it done by the end of this month. That's baloney. What you need to do is take your time, look at it. There's a place for the MWPC in rural areas. There may even be a place within the city. I don't know, but I'm telling you what our students need, what our population needs, is a community that can help them, that can hold their hand, be remedial, move them in the direction of occupation, help them with a two-year program, and perhaps prepare them for that four-year program. So that's what we need. Don't be rushed to do this. Do it in good time, take the care and the study to do it right. After all, Empower Erie has been at it for three to five years now, and they have a proposal. Don't pull that proposal. That's not the way to go. The way to go is to make sure that you have something. We only get one shot at this, and Erie deserves the best community college experience, <clears throat> just like Allegheny, just like Butler. We deserve it up here in Erie. Thank you. I'm a door of Washington uh, from Erie, uh, right in this 16503. Um, I would follow uh, Art there. I think we don't have to make a decision at this moment. We need to make the best decision we can. One of the challenges that the, uh, the NPRC has, uh, besides the fact that they're top heavy with administration, given, especially given the five years they've had to draw uh, a student base, which is sad. Um, I can't think of any, I mean, you know, people always judge a business. The best indicator of future performance is past performance. What can we really expect from this organization that's had trouble growing uh, just with its own mandate uh, going forth as far as Erie goes? And then on top of that, one of the main reasons people are successful in any field of endeavor is that they're part of a community. The doctor's kids, become successful at medicine because they get to sit at the table with doctors and, and associate with, with uh, doctors' families. They get to hear uh, the real insides of those practices and, and understand really uh, the environment that they're dealing with. When you base education simply on online learning, you remove that context. You, you don't get, the students don't get uh, the context that the education should happen in. And that's one of the advantages of having a real community college. And lastly, I will say one of the problems that the NPRC has uh, is that it is my understanding that they're part of an annual appropriation that happens on the state level. So if we decide to throw our, our cast our lot in with them, it could be gone next year. It'd be a wasted opportunity. Erie would not necessarily be able to apply again, as far as I understand. And it would be just a wasted effort altogether. 
and a, a loss, a horrible loss for this region. Uh, suffice it to say, the leadership at this table, at least, would be seen uh, by history as uh, uh, the worst possible case and example of leadership that this area, that this uh, era has ever uh, produced. And it would be a, a horrible defeat for the population of this area. We need to have something real that's permanent, that's tangible, that impacts the lives of, of people who have been most overlooked this whole time with all these billions of dollars being spent in this area. And that can only be done with a real community college. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Ken Brasington, and uh, I spent 40 years uh, of my career in, in education, the elementary level through the college level, uh, coaching junior high through the college level, and finished out my career as a high school principal uh, at Strong Vincent. And uh, I, I was blessed with a great staff, uh, faculty, great bunch of kids. And on average, our kids had an opportunity, 85% of our graduating classes had an opportunity to go on to college. 10% uh, were going in the military at that time with our ROTC program. Uh, but anyway, there are far too many students that had the ability to do that, that weren't doing it because of the lack of finances. They just couldn't afford it. Far too often I saw instances where some of our kids that did indeed go off to college came back to visit, or I'd bump into them at a basketball game, a football game, what have you, and they were back home. They made it through their first year, they were surviving academically, they couldn't afford to go on. I, I no doubt in my mind that a community college would definitely benefit those types of students, which we have a bunch of in the city of Erie, the way our, um, our financial situation is, as you know. Um, I'm sure that if you polled teachers, administrators, guidance counselors, <clears throat> the, the people that are in the trenches, they would overwhelmingly support a community college in an effort to give our kids an opportunity for a better education and a better lifestyle. That being said, I implore you to please uh, do whatever you can to take the steps necessary to put those kids in a position to be successful. Thank you. Good evening, Terry Houlihan. I'm in Dr. Faust's district. I live in Northwest Harbor Creek. So I have a little bit different perspective than a lot of the city people do. Um, I was really fortunate. I grew up in Kearsarge and I went to a tiny school. And uh, I got in trouble a lot because I was one of those kids who got done before everybody else and I was bored. And, and so instead of putting me on medications, which is probably what would happen these days, uh, I had very good teachers who really paid attention, who knew their students. So in the second grade, I was reading to the first grade classes. They gave me something to do to keep me out of trouble. You know, had I been going to school on a, on a computer at a distance, I, I don't know whether I would have even graduated from school because my talents would have been ignored. Um, you know, we need a community college. I, I met with... Uh, Kathy Dahlkemper today as well. And, uh, you know, she talked about, you know, Erie County having a building to lease to the NPRC. My issue was that is that leases can be broken. So they decided they want to break the lease after a year or two and we're stuck with a building, another building that has no viable use. Uh, I'd really like to see the people in Erie County take care of the people in Erie County. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jazz. <laughs> my name is Jasmine Flores. I live um, at 631 East 9th Street here in Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm 26 years old and fresh out of high school I realized I wasn't going to be able to afford to attend any of the colleges in our area. So what I did was I went to Great Lakes Institute of Technology and I studied medical assistant. So now I'm $14,000, well almost close to 15 with the interest 
in debt, and I've been hearing about a community college since 2005. I was 13 years old when I started hearing about a community college. I was really excited because I had done research and I had seen how much more affordable community colleges are versus the four-year institutes that we have here in our area that most of the residents of Erie can't even afford to send their kids to. Most of the kids who go to these schools are not residents of Erie and they leave when they graduate. So I think that the best way to empower our community is to give them knowledge. And the only way to do that is at affordable price, and I think the community college is the best way to do that. We have a lot of single parents. We have people who have been laid off due to jobs going overseas or just not being in the area. This is a way for them to be able to be retrained and be able to empower themselves to better their families and stay here in the city or in surrounding areas. I think the community college needs to be an actual building that is here in Erie that we can learn from. I was homeschooled for all four years of high school, and I learned because I was driven. Some students need that one-on-one -on -one with the students. Some students need to have the classroom setting. Some students <coughs> need to have group study sessions with you know, other classmates. I think that the community college is something that we need to really think about, especially because our application's on the desk. And once we pull it out, we don't know if we can have it back there. So just definitely consider the community college because you want to keep young people here. We're not going to stay here if there's nothing here for us. Hello, I am Martha Wachuku, resident of Erie, city of Erie. Um, I am actually, I was born in 93, I'm 26 as well, so I grew up in that world where technology ruled everything. And I can say, as a person who grew up in that generation, that technology is used as a supplement to a primary source. Um, learning, in the, from experience, I have had classes, mathematics, which is actually my weakness, where it's driven mainly online, they can tell you that students, no matter how academically successful they are, will struggle if they don't have the support systems provided by an actual professor or um, um, teacher. Um, I didn't realize, and I'm not originally from Erie, growing up in Allegheny County, that I was privileged to have a community college. My sister, when she graduated from high school, um, she went to a college preparatory school, had all the resources that should have made her successful at IUP when she graduated, struggled her first year, and had to go home and attend community college. And I can tell you that over the last few years that she's been at home working, that the community college has definitely uplifted her. Right now she's doing an internship with PNC, doing some type of forensic banking thing that I don't understand. Um, but the resource is there, and if you have the resource there, all students of every kind, whether it's a financial barrier, whether it's a time barrier, they're going to utilize that resource. And I can tell you as an Edinburgh grad, my freshman year, um, every year actually being at Edinburgh, a freshman class would come in and about half of the students would drop out. You know what that meant? Those students were not prepared for college, and a community college um, where students who are remedially skilled or just need a little more time could prepare them to transfer into those colleges. And also as an immigrant, um, when a lot of immigrants come over, my parents included, um, sometimes their educational um, licenses don't transfer, so they have to start all over again. Community college, again, is one of those resources. I had my mom, aunts, uncles all go through community college. Most of my family is in the medical profession, so um, get their degrees for nursing school and go on to pharmacy school and whatnot. So I stand in support of a physical community college. Thank you. My name is Katie White and I live at 2722 East Avenue in the heart of Erie. <laughs> um, I am not against a community college and some people are spinning our resistance as being against a community college. We are not. We are for a real community college. And my concern is what I've been reading in the paper and hearing at meetings What's being described by NPRC does not sound to me like a community college, and it does not sound to me like a group that's really ready, boots on the ground, to serve the diversity of the neighborhood that I live in. Um, I know it's, it's intended to be regional, but, but, the, but the area that NPRC covers is far beyond the kind of concentrated needs of northwestern Pennsylvania. Um, I'm distressed that the, at the lack of diversity. I don't know how there could be 15 people on a board and, only, and no people of color and only three women. I'm sorry, the optics look scary 
to me, because it doesn't look like my neighborhood, it doesn't look like my city, it doesn't look like my region. I'm also nervous that Empower Erie has a plan. They've been working on a plan. They've been concrete. NPRC, uh, it's slippery. I don't see anything specific. Um, and at least nothing that they're willing to produce. And I am nervous about the lack of transparency and the lack of community involvement. If this is so great, why is it being done in secret? Why is it being sprung on us? I feel like NPRC is fishing in a fish tank. They're having a hard time getting things going, so they're going to the place where, you know, they're fishing in an aquarium, hoping to be able to pad their numbers. From a personal stance, when I returned to school after 10, raising 10 children, I started out in college, I dropped out, I lacked confidence and I lacked money. But at the time I had a call to ministry, so I signed on to the religious equivalent of a two-year associate degree that we called Lake Pastoral Institute, and I know how my hand was held through that process. When I broke my leg, I was ready to quit, and one of the teachers actually drove me there. <laughs> you know, there are various times when I was ready to give up on myself and they didn't give up on me. And it was that person-to-person -person relational um, belief that, that got me to where I could be, to the point where someone said, well, why aren't you in seminary? I picked up that three-year professional degree, but it was because of the confidence and the support that I had face-to-face. -face. Years later, I taught a class on history and polity. It started out as brick and mortar. We would meet in a retreat center that we would rent, but it was face-to-face, -face. and it was successful. And there were people who were like me who needed that same support. But later, they switched. I was teaching the year that they decided, we'll do some of the, some of the students will be there online and some of the students will be face to face. My experience was that the ones who were online were just, some Thank of them you. were just jumping through the hoop and they Thank failed. Thank you. Hi there, Lee Williams, City of Erie. Community college is called that because it's the community school. It means that it's for all of us, for all of the residents, and especially our young residents. And I believe we're at a place in time where we'd like our young residents to stay in Erie as many as possible, and stem green green, uh, if you will, and continue to uplift uh, who it is we are and why it is uh, we exist here. We need it for our residents. We need not just uh, the bricks and mortar, but all the energy that goes with those bricks and mortar. All the human beings, all the human beings in their collective, not as singular individuals scattered across the region. I would challenge you, again, the Empower Erie plan, uh, I think some of the work that's already been done speaks for itself and it's stout and it's solid. But I also think there's a missing ingredient, and as someone that has taught adult learners for, I guess, close to the last 30 years uh, of my life, I would think that here in Erie, Pennsylvania, in Erie County, Pennsylvania, with the four slash five institutions of higher education we already have in this county, I think it's pretty wild that they have not yet been engaged and involved in the planning and in the creation and in the energy to build something for students that are not ready or are not able to afford to go to any of those institutions. They have a role to play, and I believe it's incumbent on you all as the county council to take the leadership in that regard and get those people at the table, and if they do determine that the table is not necessarily in their interest, then maybe some of the things that we do with and for them is less in our interest than it might be otherwise. So it's time we begin to depend upon and ask them as good citizens of our community to participate as part of the community college movement, which means a full service slate of educational opportunities for our young people here in Erie, Pennsylvania, from cradle to grave, lifelong learning. That's where things are at, not learning simply in an online environment. Kennedy Horton. Um, I am uh, part of the, I believe, 62% of uh, residents in Erie County that, um, you know, don't have any type of college degree. 
Um, I was somebody who went to school for a year. Um, academically, I did pretty well, even when I uh, slacked off. Um, and you know, the fact of the matter was, uh, I didn't have the money to go, um, like a lot of the people in the Erie School District um, and uh, in Erie County period. Um, we are financially out of reach for, um, for college in a lot of circumstances. And we do have, uh, you know, two private schools right in the city and then Barron uh, a little bit ways out. But we don't have an option that uh, will allow everybody to, um, you know, have a, a, a chance at upward mobility um, because there is no affordable education. Um, so I think if we could get a freestanding uh, community college in the city, it'll help out uh, various problems that the, uh, that the city faces. Um, you know, there is a lot of new, uh, new jobs like um, our friend, our neighbor back here was saying, um, and we, we're gonna need that education for it. Uh, and a community college would allow everybody to get in on that education so everybody could get those jobs, uh, as well as when it's an actual uh, brick and mortar place, um, people will want to send their, uh, their young students from other cities to Erie because they have affordable education. There's a way that, uh, you know, you could get educated and then probably finish out at Gannon or Mercyhurst or Penn State Barron because they're all great schools. And uh, to piggyback off what uh, our friend back here said, uh, they could get involved much more. But if we have our own school, uh, I think they'd, uh, they'd see that we care about our students and they'll care about our students much more. Um, but that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be heard? <coughs> Anyone else? <coughs> Hello, my name is Nia Darby. Um, I am a resident of the city of Erie. Um, I did go to college, I have a college degree. I actually ended up going to school out of state. Um, but one of the biggest decisions in me doing that was the fact that the schools in Erie were just as expensive as the school that I went to in another state. So um, I struggled financially really bad um, being at the school I was at. And there was a point where I was going to come home to go to school. At that point, Though my mom and I looked at tuition at Gannon and at Mercyhurst, and even with me being a Mercyhurst prep grad, I know they, we get some type of assistance, it still wasn't enough. Um, same, Barron didn't have what I wanted to go to school for, and neither did Edinburgh. Um, so I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, like, you know, what am I going to do? My friends who lived in Durham, North Carolina, and were from North Carolina, all of them had community colleges that if they were to have to take a year off or what um, have you, that they were going to be able to do that and they were still going to be able to be enrolled in school because community college was affordable for them. Um, so I think it would be beneficial. And not only that, I think it will not only be beneficial for the city of Erie, but it'll be beneficial to the schools that are in the city of Erie as well. Um, the schools in the city of Erie can start programs where students complete their years at the community college if they could finish their degrees at their school. Um, my alma mater had one of those programs and we saw an influx in our um, our student acceptance. It, so we saw an influx in how um, students performed because the students who are part of that program did exceptionally well once they got to school because they had that opportunity to have that close-knit relationship with their teachers at the community college and then they were able to excel once they got to the four-year institution. Um, so not only do I think it'll be a benefit for the residents of Erie um, because as a former educator in the city of Erie I know that a lot of our students have a hard time um, going to school because they don't know how they're going to pay for it. And we lose a lot of our uh, young people in the city of Erie because we don't have resources like this. Uh, we have re um, residents like me who leave and then decide to come back. 
So I think it would be beneficial. I think it's definitely better and definitely better than an online resource as well. Um, not everyone can do online. A lot of people need that face-to-face -face interaction. I'm one of those people. I don't excel in online classes. I am definitely face-to-face, -face, hands-on. Um, so we have a lot of students like that and I think it would be beneficial um, to definitely reconsider. Anyone else? Thank you very much. Now we'll get on with the business at hand. To approve the minutes of the May 28th meeting. Second. Have a motion from uh, Dr. Faust, seconded by Andre for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. Roll call. On the minutes, Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Chairman Leon? Yes. Uh, reports of county officials, county executive, and her designee? Not sure. No report. Okay. <coughs> Finance Committee, Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Finance Committee, Madam on June 6th, and present uh, for business tonight on your new business item. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Next, uh, uh, personnel uh, committee, Ms. Fatika. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the personnel committee met on June 6th at the conclusion of the finance meeting and agreed to put um, on the agenda of tonight items C and D. That concludes my report. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, any other? Okay. Uh, uh, Andre asked for uh, a meeting. Go ahead, uh, Andre. I to make a report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh. I'm going to be a radio correspondent. <laughs> I'm going to talk. I ran on the issue of the community college. Uh, again, 2006, all the studies, all the data said yes, Erie County needs a community college. We didn't have the political will to do it then. 2010, it said, yes, 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 Erie needs a community college. We didn't have the political will to do it. In 2016, uh, my colleagues uh, decided that now was the time uh, that we did, in fact, have that will. Uh, from 2004 to 2016, the only thing that really happened was all our numbers got worse. The achievement, uh, the uh, education gap uh, widened, the poverty uh, widened, um, uh, the population decreased the with the brain drain. Uh, and we did all these studies. So we've been at this for, for quite a while now. Have quite a bit of money put forward in this thing. Some of the things that Mr. Barnes stated, uh, couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, I wish he was here. Uh, some of the things that he tried to address are actually addressed uh, in the Erie County Community College plan that he can go online and look at, quite frankly. Uh, County Executive could read that as well. Because if she read on page 26, one of the things that she would come upon would say learning approaches that help students be successful and it compares a couple and one of them jumps right off the gate says distance learning can be an attractive and important option for areas of the country that lack access to brick and mortar post-secondary options however this option is available to those with computers and access to the internet or in isolated classrooms research shows that distance and online learning is not the best option for the kinds of students that typically are enrolled in community colleges. That's from Columbia University's Community College Research Center. And they also found that students with lower incomes and weaker academic preparation perform more poorly in distance and online learning courses than did similar students enrolled in face-to-face -face classes. In addition, we know that community college students require 
a level of advising and guidance that's not possible via distance learning. For example, a rigorously researched model of college advising uh, that has a strong positive impact on community college student retention and graduation includes active face-to-face -face advising designed to create strong relationships between students and advisors. This intrusive model, known as integrated planning and advising for student success, has been adopted as one part of a large-scale reform efforts across both Tennessee and North Carolina community college systems and has expanded into a national network of community colleges as part of the Gates Foundation. And so it's a lot of, a lot of facts in there. Uh, we know they're facts because we spent a lot of money uh, to, 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 to do the work. We were, we were very vigilant. We did our due diligence about it. So uh, the Erie Community Foundation, a beacon of light in our community, uh, forefront, forerunner, visionary, they came up with a gap analysis. And they, and, we, and they said that one of the three things that we needed to do to address this education attack, they, they sought for, in, in order for them to choose which model we would come out of there, they, they had to have a set criteria. And they chose three things. They said whatever we chose had to do these three things. And they said it, 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 one was meeting the current and future needs of the region's employers. Number two, improving educational attainment levels and household income in the region. And three, making the region a more attractive place for companies to locate. I don't see how a distance learning model attracts people to our community. I don't see how it significantly raises household incomes in our region. Uh, and so, and, uh, just as a sidebar, uh, the proposal that's on the table uh, by the administration uh, virtually gives away uh, the major tool uh, that we sought uh, when we, when we, as a co-founder of Empower Erie, uh, it's one of the things that uh, all the captains of industry, all the manufacturing hubs, all the surrounding school districts, they all said, hey, this is what we need. And so we limited, we took those three criteria and, it would, and, it, and we got to seven options. And those seven options were, uh, we, one was to challenge local colleges and universities to better serve the region, because obviously they felt miserable. Uh, option two, help PMI move north. PMI was over in another county, and they were manufacturing base, and they had manufacturing needs, and we, we considered expanding their in-house training. Option three, this is the one that's on the table now, uh, a, a regional multi-county branch campus model. And this is where, uh, it, this is where the, the, the language matters, uh, the verbiage matters. Uh, it says, uh, this proposed college does not, I'm talking about the distance level. It said, but instead would operate through a series of branch com campuses. It said, it's envisioned as a system rather than a college. So, there, and so we're asking for a college. They want to give us a system. Uh, and so then the fourth one was, uh, option was a new freestanding community college. The fifth option was enhanced supportive services, child care, transportation, financial aid vouchers, you know, scholarships you're hearing about, to attend existing providers, to, to attend existing colleges. Option six, help Mercyhurst Northeast fulfill the role of community college. I know many of you in this room heard that one time and time again. Uh, option seven, invite existing community colleges into the region i.e. Allegheny College, Butler College, someone uh, who's already uh, up and running and accredited. So we, we threw out those seven options and we quickly narrowed them down. <laughs> uh, I won't bore you with the, how they narrowed them down, but they narrowed them down to three options. Uh, adopt a regional multi-county branch campus model, rural regional system. Uh, was the first, was one option. The second option, invite existing community colleges to create a presence in the region. We went out, we, we, we visited every community college in this portion of the state. Uh, and we talked about those things. And of course, the third one was offer, uh, was create a freestanding community college. Then it got to the, the nexus of the matter, the conclusion, the final decision. 
It says the final decision of the committee came to create to, is to create a Northwest PA Community College as a freestanding institution with the invitation to other counties if they want to, to co-sponsor with Erie and with the opportunity to have branch campuses. There are no requirements for other counties to participate. If they do not, then their tuition rates are out of count. The next step, Erie County, the Erie County Executive at the time developed a preliminary business plan for a new freestanding community college to service Northwest Pennsylvania. This plan should be widely circulated and used as a starting point for discussion and debate. After gathering and considering appropriate input, the county executive in collaboration with Erie County Council should retain a highly qualified consultant to assist in the prep. We did that in the preparation of the application. We submitted the application. This application should reflect input from business and civic leaders and other stakeholders to ensure the region's education and training needs are adequately addressed. We, 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 we did that. We did it transparently. We did it openly. And we don't know anything about uh, Northwest Pennsylvania Regional. And this is the kicker. It says this process should begin immediately and move at a deliberate pace. It is no longer an option to do nothing. That was 12 years ago. You know what's happened since then? Uh, 16501 is the poor zip code in the Commonwealth. Uh, every kid in the City of Erie School District is eligible for free or reduced lunch. Uh, we've lost population. Uh, we, we, we've slipped from number 33, third largest city to fourth largest city. It's heartbreaking. The rural regional college model, when we started this thing, we, we, we envisioned working with them as well through a series of artic letters of articulation and MOUs as well, after we are up and running with our community college. Because the deal that's on the table now for one more board seat, uh, so that we can hand over our whole economic driving tool, which is really the whole nexus of it all, uh, is, is that we're going to, if we enter into that arrangement, we're going to hand our whole economic uh, engine driver that we hoped uh, a community college would do for this entire, not only uh, this county, but this region. Uh, because we're 280,000 strong. Uh, I'm here to tell you what's being offered doesn't look like a partnership. It looks more like a corporate takeover. It looks like a, a hostile takeover. In that they've always threatened our right to exist. It's an elite, an elitist plan. It's an elitist plan by an elitist pro tem, and no one wants to. And, and, and they said, "Don't get personal. Don't call names." But he injected himself into this when he put an op-ed into our paper in our region, which has never been done, to my knowledge, about his Trumpian wall. Senator Scarnati has made this drew a line in the sand and made this about his Trumpian wall. It will not benefit the masses that are in poverty here. It will not attract people to our region. It will not be an economic driver for our region. It will cost more than the college that we're proposing. But we would love to work with them after our application is voted. I don't believe that the, the Board of Education, I believe that to pull our application lets everybody off the hook. I believe that uh, we have met every matrix. We've done everything that the Community College Act of 1963 said we had to do to obtain a community college. We've done everything that the other 14 had to do. I would venture to say we've been asked to do more than the other 14. We've had assistance from the Department of Education and the Board of Education on our application. We haven't had one, a, a freestanding community college built in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania since 1973 or 71 or something. I think Pennsylvanians are wiser than that. I know Erieites. I know Erie people are wiser than that. And so just because you call uh, apple orange doesn't make it a, uh, 
uh, in orange. And when you say that it's a duplication of services, doesn't make it a duplication of service. It makes it an additional service. And, in the, and I'm here to tell you that the citizens of Erie County, after all that we've been through, uh, and all that we're about to go through, uh, we, we really deserve both. Uh, it shouldn't be either or. Uh, and finally, don't let anyone hit you with the fear-mongering move. Don't, be, don't fall for it. Oh, if we don't get this, I'm afraid we won't get anything. Because the fact of the matter is, those other eight counties, uh, we make nine, uh, all together don't have the population that we have. They're five years in and got 200 students. I think four are from Erie County. Uh, five years in. Most of them are dual enrolled, which is great. I would say, uh, whatever with this body does, Max and my colleagues do not pull our application. We paid for that application. We paid consultants. Uh, people work hundreds, maybe thousands of hours of man hours towards this. And no one, no one, no one should be allowed to unilaterally make a decision on behalf, first of all, of this body or without consulting this body, uh, and certainly not without consulting the, the general public. Uh, I think that their uh, proposal, their system, should face the same amount of vetting that ours did. And I, what's the right? We've waited so far two years now. Hell, we've waited 30 years for a college. Sur surely we can wait 30 days. Uh, so, Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, that concludes my report this evening. I'll be back next at the next meeting with some more. <laughs> Thank you. Before we go on, I you know we have a lot of business that has to still be completed even this month. And I don't know, Carl, can you hear me? Carl? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, uh, is there any uh, date for the meeting of the task force? Uh, nothing is messed up, no. I'd like, to, I'd like to get everything done so that we could put it on a one date for uh, some time, either the end of this month or the beginning of next month. You know, we're talking about something as far as the college is concerned. I've already talked to uh, uh, Ron DiNicola, and I'm sure he's going to be the representative on that task force. And also, we're going to have to do something as far as he asks, asks me uh, uh, labor agreement is concerned. And we're still hanging on as far as Lerda with the city of Erie. So you know we have we have a lot on our plate and not a lot of time to do it. So we'll try and figure something out as far as a uh, a time for a meeting with that particular task force. Okay, Andre, or uh, I'm sorry, Carl. Uh, you just yeah, got better yeah, looking. Uh, <laughs> Okay, like I said, we, we don't have much time, and what I'm, what I'm going to do with what are the, some of the issues that we have, I'm going to ask the clerk to uh, set up a, an email to all members of council to try to determine what our best date would be. I'd like to do something uh, before the end of this month. Okay? Anything else in committees? If not, we'll leave old business because we don't have any and let's uh, go to new business. Chairman. Dr. Fox. Mr. Chairman, tonight's agenda for May ordinance is number 34, 35, and 36, second reading. I second that motion. Moved by Dr. Fox, seconded by Andre to make uh, ordinance 34, 35, and 36 as a second reading. Any comments? 
If not, roll call. Mrs. Patika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Lull? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Chairman Leone? Yes. Let's go on with second read of Ordinance uh, 34. Title only, please. The second reading ordinance number 34, 2019, 2019 general fund budget, revised expenditures of $2,500 and creation of per diem line item in assessment bureau. So moved. Second. Moved by uh, Mrs. Fatika, seconded by Dr. Foss. Comments? Roll call. An ordinance 34, Dr. Faust? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Lall? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Chairman Leone? Yes. Next is uh, second reading of Ordinance 35, the title only, please, Mr. Clark. The second reading of Ordinance Number 35, 2019, 19th, 2019 General Fund Budget, Supplemental Appropriation of $9,750 for a vehicle purchase in DA office. So moved. Second. Moved by Dr. Faust, seconded by, seconded by you, Andre. Comments? Roll call on ordinance number 35. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Chairman Leone? Yes. Second reading of ordinance number 36, entitled only, please. The second reading of ordinance number 36, 2019. 2019 appointed official salary ordinance, full time assistant public defender. So moved. Second. Moved by Andre, seconded by Mrs. Fatika. Any comments? Roll call. An ordinance 36, Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Chairman Leon? Yes. Let's have first read of ordinance number 37 in title only, please. A first reading of ordinance number 37, 2019, approval agreement between the County of Erie and clerical and professional units of AFSCME Local 2666. Next is uh, resolution number 22, entitled only please, no, you better read this in its entirety because we're gonna have to make some changes. Resolution number 22, 2019, exonerating delinquent taxes, interest, and penalties on Erie Art Museum parcel 14-010-002.0-218.00 in the City of Erie and the School District for the City of Erie, resolved that the County Council of the County of Erie exonerates and forgives the current overdue real estate taxes, interest, and penalties for tax years 2009, 2010, and 2011 on the parcel identified as 14-010-002.0-218.00 contingent upon exoneration of same by the City of Erie and the City of Erie School District. Be it further resolved that the County of Erie acknowledges that the parcel identified above was tax exempt with respect to real estate taxes when acquired by the Erie Out Museum, a nonprofit organization, and that all overdue real estate taxes, interest, and penalties pertaining to the parcel and outlined on the Exhibit A are therefore exonerated and forgiven. All the same. All. Did you say? Yes. Yeah, okay. Moved by Mr. Anderson. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Port. Uh, I'll entertain a, a motion to amend it that would indicate after the second paragraph the four mentioned is contingent upon 
exoneration of Saint by the city of Erie and the Erie School District. So and moved. Moved by Mr. Horton, who seconded, <coughs> seconded by Mrs. Patika. Comments? Roll we'll call on the amendment. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Chairman Leon? Yes. Now, uh, we'll call on the uh, resolution as amended. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Chairman Leone? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Faust? Move to approve the appointments that we have on our package tonight on uh, the uh, EMTA, which the extended term of Ashley Loss Lawson to October 1st, 2020. The appointment of David Robinson to October 1st, 2021. Term of Tom Wyatt to October 1, 2020, and Lynn Twilly Darber uh, to uh, October 1, 2020. Second. Moved by Dr. Faust, seconded by Mr. Hort. Comments? Yeah. Roll. I got some comments. Go ahead. <clears throat> uh, the reason this action is, has to be taken is because earlier these county executives submitted these. Uh, four individuals to be appointed to the <laughs> Erie Metropolitan Transit Authority. Uh, uh, as the liaison, uh, we had well, we had quite some concerns because of how things had ran in the past, uh, and so it, it, the whole process and the whole board thing, the whole EMTA, uh, became really really important. I mean, we, we have a $60 billion investment over there in the new garage. Uh, and we, so when the appointments were brought down, we only granted them one year. Uh, and although these terms are going to be staggered for what was requested uh, at that time, they're going to be uh, retroactive. Uh, we felt that it was prudent to do so at this time. Uh, and the, one of the reasons that I came and asked my colleagues to consider doing this was because, A, uh, they removed the interim uh, tag from Mr. Peterson. Uh, we felt that it was important to have local control, someone who understood the ridership, someone who understood uh, the men and women who drove the bus, uh, and, uh, and the municipalities and counties that they serve. Uh, two, uh, having attended a few meetings, Followed up on all the meet minutes and spoken with several of the of the appointees. It quickly became uh, evident to me that things were going to be different, uh, and that the politi uh, political political uh, uh, I didn't see that. I rode the bus a few times. I went over to the garage. I met with the men and women about the labor issues. Uh, uh, since then, they've signed a contract. Workforce seems to be happier. Men and women are operating, uh, in, and they're on the trajectory that this uh, this county, this region deserves. And so, yes, we're here today to uh, to do a right uh, or to make those uh, appointments, to put them on e even ground or even footing uh, with the city, county, parks. And so, I'm pleased to sponsor uh, have this ask. Any comments? If not, roll call on FGH and I. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Dr. Faust? Yes. Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastatter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Chairman Leon? Yes. Mr. Chairman. Dr. Faust? Move to approve the sale of parcels from repository uh, in the next number of listing our agenda Second. By Dr. Faust, seconded by Mr. Fatika. Any comments? Roll call. Dr. Faust? Yes. 
Mr. Horton? Yes. Mrs. Law? Yes. Mr. Rastetter? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Fatika? Yes. Chairman Leon? Yes. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Thank you, Chairman.